Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to the next, next episode in the series. Today we are just going to uh, make a little bit more progress on the application that we've started. We've done a lot of configuration and a lot of explaining and so I'm going to A, continue that and B, uh, maybe we'll get into code a little bit here today. So um, if, you if you saw the last video, I seem to have an issue trying to find the file that I was interested in. And it seems like I was actually missing some parts to the project that were quite uh, important here. So um, what we were actually doing here when we were um, communicating this fragment to have this argument of this type string is using something called safe args. And so this was part of the introduction to the navigation components library that, that Google uh, has provided to us. and it actually, if you, if you remember the old school way of communicating with fragments, you would put things into a bundle and then, you know, with a key, and then you would fetch them with that key on the other side, uh, you know, in whatever fragment you were going to, and you would have to, you know, call a function that was called either get string or get boolean or get long or something along those lines so that, um, you know, you actually had to know, you know, okay, we need this specific key and we need to know that it's of this specific type and you need to make sure that when you're putting it in the bundle it's that type and when you're pulling it out of the bundle it's that type etc so what they've done here is they've actually basically made it as if you were calling a function passing in a string or a boolean it's just much more straightforward um, to navigate with this safe args component and plug in so i was getting ahead of myself a little bit here because um uh, I, don't, I guess I just forgot this step, and this is kind of the way that I'm uh, used to doing things for the last you know few years or so. But there's actually a little bit more config that we needed to add. So we needed to go ahead and copy this uh, information here and add it to our build.gradle file at the project level. So before we had always been working in the um, the app module level which has a, a bit more specific information for this particular module. And so it's a little difficult to understand because we have one app, so we have one module. Um, but you know, there, there's ways to configure projects so that you have multiple modules within the same project, and those modules can have different dependencies, different implementations of certain things, etc. cetera. Uh, but then at the project level, it's kind of like the thing that sits above all of the different modules and says, here are the dependencies, or here are things that are gonna be applicable um, you know, at, at a little bit of a higher level. So we actually needed to go ahead and do that. We needed to copy this uh, information, pop it in here, and also apply the safe args plugin here. So you need to go to the top of the file in the module um, Gradle file, add in just this one line. These other two were already there. They're standard uh, just plugins for Android development and then this one for, for Kotlin specifically. Um, so, and this information here, uh, that was for the project one and then this is for the app uh, build.gradle file and so because we're using Kotlin, we just use the uh, Kotlin plugin instead of the Java plugin. Um, so, so that's about it. And then when we take a look at our project here, we can see uh, the project view here, not the Android view. The, the project view within our app, we have a build folder, and then we have a, uh, a generated folder, and then source, and then nav args. And then within here, we have some information here. So this is what I wanted to show you a little bit before. So, uh, or in the last episode, these files here are generated again because of the way we've described this navigation file uh, here. So if we take a look at the attraction, no, we'll do this one first, sorry, the home fragment directions. So this is the class that you're gonna end up using to reference this action. Um, and then specifically, because this action moves us to a fragment that takes an argument, uh, we need a way to supply that argument, and so we do so via this directions file. So if we take a look here, it's actually, like I said, in the build folder, so you can't modify anything. Uh, well, I mean, I guess you can, but um, if you were to delete this whole file and, uh, you know, re rerun, it would come right back or make any modifications. You can't, you can't do anything to these files here. Um, so we can take a look and see some of the information in here, and we can actually see a, uh, a variable here called attraction ID. 
we can see a get action ID that corresponds to action underscore home fragment to attraction detail fragment. And that lines up exactly one to one to what this ID is here. And then there's uh, you know a little get arguments. And so you can see here that we're actually putting the attraction ID that we have here into the bundle and it's labeled attraction ID as well. So you can see how uh, th this information here is being translated into a particular generated file for us that we're then able to reference in our own code and actually navigate um, or, or, or use to perform the navigation within this context of the library. So it's, it's, it's very, very uh, nifty and beneficial. And then if we take a look at the flip side here, the attraction detail fragment args. So this, this is the file that gets generated that basically is going to encapsulate all of the information that we uh, have here. So again, we have one particular uh, um, field named attraction ID. It is of type string and you actually can as well set nullable to be true or false, but it defaults if it's not set to be false. And so that's important here because if you see here, um, you know, again, we have this attraction ID, we have this idea of putting a string in a bundle here, labeled attraction ID, uh, but then basically when we're pulling it from the bundle, we can see at some point this code here says if our bundle contains the attraction ID, then we get that string, great. Then if our attraction ID equals null, we throw in a legal argument exception saying argument attraction ID is marked as non-null, but was passed a null value. So you can see here that at runtime, this application will crash if you try to do something that is technically, you know, in this case, illegal that uh, for, for how you define the system. So because this isn't nullable, there's actually a check that happens in this generated code to make sure that that field is not nullable. And the importance of that is that when you're in the fragment that's using the, um, the argument uh, that was passed into it, it can safely know to use this uh, field and it's not null for sure. I mean, it could be empty, you know, that, and that's a different story, but it's at least not going to be null. So you're not gonna get a, uh, a null pointer thrown uh, in your application. Uh, and so then also here you can see to the else case of if the bundle contains the key, you will also have an illegal argument exception thrown, basically saying that this is a required argument and it's, it, it's just missing from the bundle, it doesn't exist. So there are checks in place here that uh, basically are the generated versions or generated logic that comes into play based upon how you had um, define this one and so much like how you can do nullable you can actually say default value and you know you can default this to, to literally the word default or something along those lines um, so in this case we're actually making it a little strict and and providing a policy that says this fragment if you want to go to this fragment you need to supply an attraction ID field it needs to be of type string it cannot be null and it cannot be empty so that when we get to that file we can operate safely knowing hey, we have this information at this point in time, so there's nothing to worry about. So there's, uh, you know, this is a relatively simple example, but if we were to put, you know, six, seven more arguments, which you can do inside this bundle, which we're gonna go ahead and do that. So let's just say is favorite, and let's set it to be Boolean, and let's set the default value to be false. If we go ahead and rerun the build because again we need to actually build the project so that um, this file get these files get regenerated now you can see here put string put boolean is favorite is favorite equals false so now that you know that's taking into account the default value that we had um, and then again there's a little bit less of checks here because it can be um, it, you know, it, it doesn't have to check because we've given it a default value. It doesn't have to check that if it contains it or not, we know the, the, the fallback case is to set it to false, right? So we can actually use this to our advantage tremendously uh, to really ensure that we're providing the correct arguments that we need to provide from one screen to the next. And um, 
there is also a way to instead of this arg type here. Oh, come on. What? I thought it was going to populate with something else. But uh, essentially, you know, the arg types that you can fill out here are going to be um, the the primitives, right? So it's going to be a string, it's going to be a boolean, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a, a, a double or a float, or uh, I think you can do a primitive like array of strings or something like that. But um, you could also fully qualify this as an object that you've created in your project, as long as that object is serializable. And then you can actually pass um, entire objects from one screen to the next through the bundle. Now there's, there's pros and cons to that, and, and I would like to say that with the addition of the Android architecture components, which we will get into uh, in a little bit, there, there isn't really a reason to do that, and I would shy away from that, especially because you might run into issues where it's like there is a limitation to the size of the bundle going from one screen to the next. So if you try to, you know, stuff an object in there that's too large, it will actually crash runtime, and you're kind of, you know, you're kind of screwed at that point. So um, let's see if we can see it happen in real time. Oh wow, it already did. But yeah, when I built it, it already removed the uh, is favorite boolean and stuff like that because we had removed it here as well. So um, gonna go ahead and just wrap things up here. I kind of wanted to show you how this uh, system is working, how this library works as far as generating code for you on your behalf um, that we then can use inside of our um, fragments. So uh, I will catch you in the next one where we will actually start to get into a little bit of code here. So thanks for sticking with me. I will see you there.